Hey everyone, so I am going to do a Bell's Palsy update video. Um, the last one I did was when I was, when I had it for four weeks. So this week would be like week 90 something because in about a month we're about to hit two years of Bell's Palsy, which is crazy to me because when I did the last video, I was thinking like surely at the most six weeks and it would be gone. So who would have thought I'd be here two years later with the same condition. Um, I am a lot better. As you can tell, like it has, I've recovered a lot more than I was back then and the progress has been better, but I think we're kind of at the, just kind of this is how it's gonna be. Um, if you're not familiar with Bell's Palsy or you haven't kept up with me or watched the previous video, it's basically just a paralysis, uh, like a, a half of your face. So mostly, it mostly usually just affects one side of the face. So this side right here, I can't, see I can't smile all the way or my eye doesn't open all the way, it blinks slower. Um, from the last video, it was a lot worse. Um, my face was a lot more crooked, my nose was turned, and I couldn't open my mouth a whole lot. Um, so yeah, I just kind of want to give an update on kind of where I was, how I was feeling, and just all that sort of thing. I feel like when I Google or search for Bell's Palsy videos on YouTube, I always just find videos that um, kind of like, here's these facial exercises to try to recover, or here's this or that, and there's not really a whole lot of uh, videos kind of with people sharing their experiences with it. It's probably because... Um, it's very rare that it you don't recover from it so there's probably not a whole lot of people like me but um i just wanted to make a video just to share if it helps anybody not feel so alone in this because over this time over like the last two years i've met met on instagram a few people just around the world around the country that are going through this and the ones that I've met are mostly like their moms. A few of them are moms that literally got it the exact same week that I did. Their babies are Mila's age so it's just kind of crazy but it's nice to, not that I want them to have it but I'm glad to have somebody on this journey with me and someone to talk to and you know if ever having the hard days and they're so sweet because we kind of check on each other and just kind of see how we're doing and it's just always nice because they know exactly what it feels like and sorry I'm going to try not to be annoying and touch my hair all the time but um you don't really know what it feels like till you like go through something and I know this I don't want to be dramatic like oh it's just her smile's gone her face is not the same like it's much more than just vanity and while that is a big part of it, like we're already so critical of ourselves and you know, self-esteem and confidence is hard to come by. And so when something like this happens, it really doesn't help. Um, sorry, Mila's over there eating her snacks. So I'm just checking on her. Um, I, I'm in a much better place than I was that first video that I did. Uh, at the time it was, really hard because I was a new mom so having to adjust to all of that and then throwing Bell's palsy on top of that um it makes my voice shaky because it was just like a really hard time and just it was I don't know it was just such a bittersweet time because I was so excited to be a mom and have Mila in my arms finally but then it was just like this dark cloud over that and um so yeah, it was like I already wasn't getting sleep and then just because being a new mom and having to wake up like every hour or two and then having a pain at like the very first few weeks when you have Bell's palsy, it hurts right here, just excruciating pain at nighttime. So it was just dealing with a whole lot. And um, I think at that time too, it was just so unknown whether I was gonna recover or not. So it was just kind of always like hoping and you know, just wondering like, am I gonna be like this forever? Is this gonna go away? And now I'm kind of at the point where like, I've accepted it and honestly like most of the days I just forget I have it. 
and uh, and I mean obviously like there's been so much progress since then so like there's a lot more symmetry on my face that like you can still see my eyebrow moves and this one doesn't um, and it's just a lot of times you can mostly just tell when I'm trying to smile but like I try really hard in my pictures to just not smile or just to keep a straight face because then you can't tell as much but it's still um, you know, it's just hard when you're used to being a certain way for your whole life or looking a certain way or just, I mean, just being able to smile and you can't do that anymore. It's just something to get used to and I don't know, it's, I'm just glad that I'm just in a much better place than I was back then. So, um, anyway, as far as like treatment wise, I basically just kind of stopped everything I was doing. It just got to a point where it was getting really expensive to do things and I was just trying just everything and it just got really exhausting and you know, it was just stressing me out so much. I went to therapy for about six months, three times a week where they would do like electro stimulation with needles. It's kind of like acupuncture, but it was just like a much thicker needle and they would insert it right here, right here and down here on my chin and like connect it to a machine and just stimulate try to stimulate like the nerves and muscles and it I just got tired of it. it was just like a bunch of like poking and it, I mean it wasn't a pleasant feeling and it would it hurt I mean I got used to it but it would still hurt and I mean I do think it helped a lot but I kind of think it just got to a point where I was just at a standstill um, I also did like the CBD oil, like putting the drops like under my tongue. I heard that was supposed to help. And then I did like hot rock massages. I did acupuncture, facial massage. I still do facial massages here and there um, just because my face gets really tight after a while. So it always feels good just to go and just kind of get loosened up because it gets really tight because obviously it doesn't move. Um, I don't know, just the facial exercises, massaging it with a hot towel. There's different tea. I literally like tried everything. And you know, you just get to a point where you're just kind of over it. And I don't know, it just kind of accept it for what it is. I have, hi Mila. Um, say hi. Her hair's a little crazy. She just woke up from a nap. Um, I also did meet through meeting people on Instagram. I met a few people that have gone to see Dr. Aziza Day in California. So he's in Beverly Hills and he's like the number one doctor that deals with uh, just everything like Bell's palsy, facial nerve, par facial paralysis, um, just every synchronesis, everything. So I did. They encouraged me to meet with him because they are treated by him. One of them has had Bell's palsy for 10 years. And the other one, not as long, but um, I just, you know, they were very encouraging about it. I've talked to them on the phone and they're so sweet. So, <laughs> what are you doing? So, I met with him via vi video chat. I did like a consultation, just kind of trying to see what his thoughts were on my situation. And basically, I have seen <coughs> Uh, what are you doing? Uh, I have synchronesis. So when my belt, when the nerves are trying to recover, they basically connect it to the wrong place. And so it's not, I mean, it's still paralysis, but there's just a lot of involuntary movement on that side. It's like when I smile, when I smile, this eye closes and um, just different things that aren't supposed to happen. And so there are treatment options for that, which was really good to hear that there are like options out there. Basically it's either you can do Botox and that helps with the symmetry of your face. And that's just kind of a maintenance thing that you'd have to do every so often. Or he also has, he does a surgery to where they would cut open right here, either in front or behind the ear. I can't remember. And then basically go in and deaden the nerves that are, uh, kind of keeping you from smiling and just the nerves that aren't really supposed to be overpowering your other nerves and but that surgery is super super expensive and insurance doesn't cover it it's basically like buying a really brand new 
expensive car and you know it's full out of pocket cost and then it also requires like a 10 day stay in california yeah. so that's kind of tra tricky to figure out with a toddler because i would not leave her for 10 days and you know trying to figure out somebody to go with you and all of those little details so i don't know if that's something that's even feasible definitely not in the near future but i don't know that's just kind of something we have to think about but then at the same time we can't really put a price on something like that but you know, uh, one of the girls that had it for 10 years and just got it done, she said she wished she wouldn't have waited as long. It's made such a difference. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I can even tell just from being yeah. a friend on Instagram, like she posts more, yeah. shows her face more, and just, you know, a lot more social. And you could tell that she's really regained some of that confidence. And I'm so happy for her. Her smile is like 75% yeah. of the way back. It, she looks really good. And the other friend, Oh, goodness. are you okay? The other friend only does uh, Botox so far with him. She hasn't quite gotten to the point where she wants to do the surgery yet. So I, that's kind of where I'm at. I kind of want to try the Botox option first and just kind of see if that helps any. Sorry to get me list settled um so yeah anyway those are just kind of the options going forward now um so basically i've kind of just realized this is how i'm gonna be unless i get that surgery or botox done because i think it's past the point of recovering on its own which i'm okay with now it's you know it's been a struggle but i'm finally at that point where you know like there's a lot worse things in life and a lot worse situations and even though like this was a big thing for me and a big change and a big just a big situation for me personally like it could be much worse and there are just so much bigger issues to worry about than you know if my face is a little crooked if my smile is not fully back and that's just kind of how I have to think about it now. I don't, there are still hard days. Like I've posted before about there, for, like within two days, someone asked me like, what's wrong with your face? Like in the middle of, while I was talking to them. And then in front of like the whole nail salon had me spell out Bell's like my condition so they could go Google it. And I had to write it down on a paper. And you know, those times are kind of awkward and kind of hard just cause everybody looks at you like, what is wrong with her face or whatever and then another time when we bought this house and they were taking a picture you know for the soul with the sold sign and they're like aren't you gonna smile aren't you happy and it's like yeah i am happy and i'd love to smile but then my face would be extra crooked in the picture but and i know they don't mean it ugly but it's just those days that make it a little bit harder just kind of sometimes when i just sit there and think like oh like mila's never gonna have a picture with me like the old me you know like with a full smile it's just with my no teeth smile and i know that sounds like really ridiculous and so small but i don't it's just kind of one of those things until you're in the situation you kind of know what i mean like and this is kind of a feeling that i've shared with some of the other girls that have gone through this and um it's just like a really weird thing because even like when memories pop up on facebook of like old pictures from before I had Bell's palsy, I feel weird sharing them or I feel weird like using pictures like that, like, even like as profile pictures or just sharing them again because it feels almost like like I'm being a fraud because I'm like that, that's not me anymore, like that I'm not that girl anymore and, it, and it's just like such a weird feeling because it's like I still am, I just look a little bit different. So um, anyway, hi Mila, are you back? Are you eating your bunnies? Ba, ba. <laughs> oh my gosh so yeah that's kind of where I'm at and you know like I've said before my mom had this three times and she was able to fully recover all three times and me I've got this once and never did so like I said I'm just I'm okay with it now I'm just trying to find the positive in it and I know it's something I've prayed about, you know, every single day since I've got it. 
and I know that you know my prayers don't go unheard and I know that for some reason one reason or another like I'm supposed to be going through this and this situation is something that I had to go through or continue to go through because just even little things like we've been praying for a new house because we outgrew our other one like fairly quickly and that was just kind of something that we really really wanted to happen I've been praying and praying about it and it just really happened out of nowhere like we weren't even planning on doing it anytime soon and you know everything just happened so like out of nowhere and just kind of worked out in our favor it's one of those things that you know like god has his hand in it and same for my husband's job like he's been wanting this job for such a long time and it just came out of nowhere and that was another thing that like, we've been praying for forever and so I know like God hears my prayers about Bell's palsy but for one reason or another that I'm supposed to have it and so I just hope that in me having it I can help somebody else not obviously not in treatment or anything like that but just help them to know that they're not alone and I'm always here for anyone versus whether it's in real life or just social media friends or just anyone that watches this video I hope that they don't feel that they're alone in this and that there are lots of us out here still dealing with it and you know it's not the end of the world even though sometimes the littlest things feel like the biggest so um yeah so that's kind of where I'm at now and I'm sure this video was kind of short probably really boring but anyway I just wanted to share that Mom. so Mom. I think we're gonna go play outside or do something she's got lots of energy stored up so if you've watched this far thank you for watching and I guess I'll see you in the next video